Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokush here at the Libertarian Party of North Carolina. Wait, is that correct? It's not North Carolina Libertarian. Party. There's a big sub there's a big debate. We can't even we can't even get into the name of the organization here without making sure that we're not disturbing somebody. But the Libertarian Party Libertarian of North Carolina. For the state. Oh. Always. But just rhetorically, people would say North Carolina LP because it wouldn't sounds easier. Some people are just wrong. I don't. I don't know. I don't have any explanation for it. And they're not wrong because they can't get the name right. They're wrong because they're not libertarians yet. But we're working on it. It's okay. Nobody's perfect. So Susan has been chair of the party. This is for uh, for almost a year. She was elected last year and just completed a successful convention. We are here with with the the murmurings of the uh, I don't know after gatherings in the background. This beautiful pledge sign. I hereby certify that I do not, do not believe in or advocate the initiation of force as a means of achieving political or social goals. It is really cool traveling the country, going to so many different LP conventions, seeing how the statement of principles is still the glue that holds the party together and this simple pledge. By David, David Nolan, 1971. All right, so uh, any surprises this weekend, Susan? Um, I was surprised how smoothly things went. <laughs> it was great. Everybody was very nice to me for my first chairing my first convention. I've never chaired a body of uh, more than ten people, and uh, I don't think I cried more than once. So yeah, it went pretty well. Kept it off stage at least. Yes, yes, I had to. Any particularly hot issues being debated? I mean, I saw a couple motions, resolutions was all yeah. pretty normal stuff. You had, you had cooperation, people going into different positions on the executive committee yeah so um we um recognized outright libertarians as our um gsm outreach uh arm and for people who don't know what's gsm damn it oh did i put you on the spot <laughs> too many acronyms <laughs> to remember yeah that's why <laughs> so you know, gender and sexual minorities no. thank you gender and sexual minority <laughs> yes that sounds good the, the reason this is an important thing for the Libertarian Party and taking charge on this is that instead of trying to, you know, win the acronym game, we've got LGBTQ, uh, da, da, and, and keep going. It's just no, gender and sexual minorities. And technically, that's everybody. Right. But that's kind of the great thing about it is that it makes... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about the word minority, but yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're... No, if you think about it, everybody, by right. definition, is part of a gender and sexual minority. Like, well, now unless... Going back to Ayn Rand. We're all oh. a minority of one, uh, right? <laughs> well, well, no, I mean, even if you're, if you're a straight, white male, that's still not a majority of the population because you take out... Any, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get myself in trouble if I keep going here. Susan, what, what did you learn from this weekend? Um, I learned that chairing a meeting is a lot different from being in the body. Um, it, when I'm in the body of a meeting, uh, especially like this, I'm hyper-focused on which platform playing, what are the implications of each change to the platform or the bylaws, and um, what are its ideological backgrounds and that kind of stuff. But as chair, I just want to make sure everyone takes their turn to speak and uh, the vote is held and no one lynches me or anyone else. Um, yeah, so it's a lot different chairing. It's a, it seems like we're using a lot of uh, a dramatizing language here. Like, I'm tired. <laughs> I had a great time. Everyone was really nice to me um, and nice to each other. So it was great. Um, we have, in the last two years, the last two conventions, we've gone from typically 30 to 60 people at our meetings, um, at our conventions, to 80 to 100. And that's, that's amazing. Um, say what you will about Gary Johnson. I think he did a lot for the party in terms of growth. So... Um, and we've done a lot for our party in terms of growth. Well, you so. don't think it's possible that the party grew despite nominating someone who's not a libertarian? Um, I'm not going to walk on that <laughs> one. I was the Johnson campaign coordinator. I did not uh, support Johnson at convention, at the national convention. But when he won the nomination, um, I wanted to grow the party. And Absolutely. Same way I felt. Yeah. So that's what we worked on. And it seems to have been a successful. All right. So... Well, I, I would ascribe it more just to the inevitability of these ideas. Yeah, of you know, that we have faith that these ideas are, are essential to, to humanity. and that, that Dr. Lark mentioned that when he spoke. Uh, he's, a, he put it, he's a long-term optimist, and that's how I feel, too. I mean, because you, ha you have to think that what's right is what's going to prevail. Um, and if we're doing what's right, 
which we wouldn't <laughs> be doing if we didn't think that, then we think it's going to prevail. So yeah. If, if anything, that's traveling the country. The the one thing, if I could say that I would I would want to give to the movement, to the party, to the members is 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 confidence in those ideas that we already love and have so much intellectual faith in to, to really act on that and live that. But I'm just going to end with one uh, one harder question to put you on the spot here. What have you learned about yourself serving as chair and just in general being part of the Libertarian Party? Um, I've learned I have a lot more capability than I thought I did, I feel like. Um, I don't think, like, I've, I'm not trying to say I've done a stellar job, but I feel like, uh, and actually the Johnson campaign started teaching me that, and that's why I ran for chair, that... Um, I have a lot of organizational skills, not in the sense of being organized myself, but in helping other people uh, bring out their talents for organization. So using other people. I know that sounds <laughs> bad, but... Um, or Maximizing the value the of the contribution of others by organizing them in a synergistic, collaborative way, right? That sounds let, good. Yeah. Let me put it in political terms for you. Well, in, in bringing out um, and getting people connected. That was sort of the theme when I ran for chair, and that's how I've tried to, to operate as chair. Um, a lot of times people are having good ideas and good plans and good work, but they need to be talking to other people and uh, just getting them in connection, you know, contact with each other. You know, that's the other thing about the confidence, I think, that, that is missing just at, at a core level because it's beaten out of so many of us and as a movement being, you know, the punks and the outcasts and the downtrodden coming in and going like, no, this injustice isn't going to stand anymore. We are the adults in the room coming in and taking charge, right? I thought we were all the wealthy businessmen, you know, with the <laughs> big bankrolls and... Where's, where's my monocle and my and my cane? You know, that's that's not the Libertarian Party. But uh, for people who, w whether you're a Libertarian or not, you know, I, I hope hearing just a little bit from Susan in in this context gives you a sense that we're the ones who are going to make this happen. Uh, there's nothing. The, 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 it's fun. the absolutely the, the shell of authority that that the government puts on is an illusion. Well, we wear suits, so we should be in charge of you. And like, you come to a, a convention like this and you go, no, you should run for office, you should run for office, you should run for office. What, you think you're, you think, you think the, the guy in the suit with an R and a D next to his name is better than you? Because, and it's, it's, it's absolute crap. And so, I, you know, I think Susan is, is, is a great example of embodying this. So, Susan, any last words for the audience? No, thank you for coming and talking to us. And uh, it's been great to see you. And, um, just keep fighting the good fight, everyone. It's not just a fight, it's fun. It's like a party and a fight <laughs> together, which is really weird, but yeah. Yeah. And you too will be surprised of what you are capable of. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.